What is up? Welcome to the Stat Guy Show, episode number 67. Joining me tonight is a up-and-coming No Prep King star, Miss Paige Coughlin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I'm glad we finally got to hook up over the last couple of weeks. We've been trying to schedule this, and tonight <laughs> finally worked out. So the, I'm happy about that and appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for having me, and I appreciate you working with me for sure. Thank you. Um, so let's uh, let's get right into it. So Paige, you've had a really busy off season, probably busier than most. Um, the first thing I want to touch on, there's a couple things. First thing I want to touch on is um, that you have gotten engaged to Johnny. Now, I know Johnny as your team manager, but everybody probably knows him as your team manager. Um, so how did that come about? And also did, did the engagement come with a promotion? Does Johnny now a higher up position with the, on the team or how's that go? Oh my gosh, that's funny. But you know what? I actually met him. He he was close with my brother, TJ. Um, him him and TJ would go back and forth about Junior Dagster engines. And this was way back in the day, probably even before I was born. But um, <laughs> I know, it's horrible. But um, they they knew each other for back at racing. And that that's kind of how I met him. And I was down here actually living my, gosh, I don't even remember what year it was couple years ago but i was living down here and he invited me out to the racetrack locally uh palm beach international raceway which is no longer here but mm -hmm. he was like why don't you come out and see the grudge racing and i was like okay fine yeah sure and then it just kind of stuck from there you know he was testing his roadster and there was actual no prep racing going on just like a test and tune nothing too crazy but it was just a fun experience and i got to really know him so it just since then it kind of stuck but um, no, he's known the family for a while, and that's just when him and I got to know each other. But since then, he's been such an important part of our team. You know, he knows his way around an engine, so that mm -hmm. just only helped our team. And I know him and the guys are super close. So it was, <laughs> it was funny. We started off calling him team manager, and then <laughs> he kind of went throughout the first half of the season, and they knew him prior to it, but you know, we're calling him team manager, this and that. And then he proposes and we're like, well, you're actually the the team manager now. So I have to remind <laughs> him of his position every now and then say, hey, this sounds like a team manager deal. You know, you need to step up to the plate. And uh, it's just funny. We work together well and the guys love him, which is that much more exciting. And we all get along and it's so much fun to work on the road. And it gets to the point where if he can't attend a race, it's almost like, a part of us is missing. So he's definitely yeah. an important part of Team Golden Child. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. I'm happy for you guys. <laughs> um, did did the did the yes, when you said yes, did it come with a stipulation that the wedding date cannot be during No Prep King season? It has to be oh my between gosh. the off season. <laughs> I, I was explaining, I mean, he understood, but I was explaining to kind of everybody else, you know, the the friends the family uh potential bridesmaids groomsmen i'm like you know our only off season really is these these few months in the winter and that's yeah. kind of when the wedding has to be whether it's next year two years three years from now who knows because we're we're so busy running his engine shop my apparel business now his his new real estate stuff it's we're, we're busy and that's a good thing i'm not mad about it and you know we're, we're like, we, we have to fit it within these few months and mm -hmm. we're, we're planning a little engagement party in July since we do have a portion of that month off. So I'm excited about that. And, um, we know wh whatever year it falls on, it will be a winter wedding, but you know, you can't <laughs> complain coming from Florida cause it's always warm. No. So not, right. not too bad. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, again, congratulations. Let's get into, um, some other off-season news, and I have a video here. I'm going to play it, and you can tell us, everybody, all about the video after I play it. Um, but you, uh, Golden Child, got a little facelift. This. So, tell us about it. What did you do? It looks so much different. Still a third, still a third gen, but that that color. Tell us about the color. It's a really cool color. No, it's it's amazing. You know what? We first kind of introduced that paint color, and I'm like, oh, you know, I never would have thought about that prior to it being introduced to us. And I'm like, 
already why not send it do whatever you want i think it's great i trust you and seeing that car just is mind-blowing you know what it what it went through last year and knowing what it looked like when it when we started in national trails of season six what we finished with at season six the car mm -hmm. had seen some better days it, it went through some tough situations some of that was my fault for sure. And then some of it was just unforeseen circumstances that were just, we're glad everybody was okay in the end. But, you know, stuff like that does happen and it's unfortunate, but it's part of life. And, um, you know, we were able to bring that car back, get it painted and we're like, let's change it up this year. Let's do something a little bit different. And I just think that color looks absolutely amazing. And I, I love it. It's different. There's not another brown car out there. And it's right. not entirely brown. It's more of a bronze and it's called a chameleon paint. You know, it's it changes yep. the color as, as you kind of change. And it's going to look black or bronze or even a little bit orange in some lights. And I just think that's so unique and so different and I, I really like being that kind of um, competitor in in the field, just something a little bit different. So I'm really excited about it. And I just think it it just makes that car look absolutely beautiful as it should. That car is, it's so close to our family and to, to our tuner, Mike Reese and his family. And I mean, same car as last year, nothing has changed. And um, nothing has changed, but, um, just, just knowing that that it, we were able to restore it to its former glory and to even add that paint job to even make it look that much prettier. is yeah. I'm really, really proud of the work everybody did between Team Golden Child and Mr. Wonderful Motorsports did a fabulous job. Nice. It looks amazing. You're, it's definitely, it was unique as it was because it was only third gen in No Prep Kings. Kai used to have one, but not, not anymore. And then now you made it the only brown car, bronze color car. It, it looks awesome. I'm glad you're going with the unique and not just doing a first gen uh, Camaro that has stripes and like everybody else. <laughs> you know, no, I'm glad you're no, thinking outside the box. No, those cars are beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But coming into this deal, you know, we got a lot of comments about being like, oh, you're just trying to be like Kai. You're just trying to be like Shocker. And I'm like, honestly, no, I, that's not what my intention was. I mean, we have this third gen and it, it's close to all of us. You know, my dad used to race it. Mike used to race it. His wife used to race it. It's it's a part of the family. And to know that it looks, it just looks like a third gen. It It's just an amazing car. And to know that the fans loved it. I loved it. I felt so comfortable in the car. I'm like, I don't ever want to change it. I just want to keep this car exactly the way it is and race it for as long as we can. But you know what? I can't help it that it looks that pretty and Kai just had to change it up. You know, that's, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry at the same time. Right. No, I got you. And it's definitely beautiful. And it's also fast. It was pro charged last year. And look from the videos and the pictures, it looks like it's going to be pro charged again. Um, possibly a lot of people have been um, changing combinations or getting a second car with a different combination this season. Um, from how it looks is you're going to be sticking with pro charger. Is that, is that your plan moving forward? Were you happy with the Pro Charger last year? You know what? The guys at, at Pro Charger really took care of us, and we had great success with Pro Charger. And, and going through season six, that was my first year ever driving a car like that. I mean, with that much power and that much responsibility, it was a lot for me to even learn. So if you guys think it was fast last year, just wait till season seven because I think we're going to blow you all out of the water. But <laughs> that being said... You know, we do see some of the rules changes for the other power outers going into season seven. And I'm like, OK, OK. And my dad sees that, too. And you never know. We might have something up our sleeve, but we're not ready to uh, admit it just yet. But um, we're going to start off with Pro Chargers. They, they've, they're they absolutely great with us. I love working with them. And, um, you know, we had a very competitive race car last year. And, you know, we have every single intention of continuing that in season seven and just turning on those wind lights. Now that I've had more seat time and I'm that much more comfortable in the car and even after testing that we're, this is the this is the thing we want to do. We have it all to our liking, the tweaking and the this and the that between Mike and Justin and Johnny and my dad. And 
we're all on the same page here and we're just going to go off to Maple Grove and, and turn on some wind lights. That's, that's our goal. Awesome. Yeah. You spoke about last season um, and how fast and how successful you were. Let's talk about that. Um, last time you were on the show was during the mid summer break. Um, and so to end the season, you fit the rest of the season, you, you went, you end up racing in 10 invitationals. You finished in 23rd in invitational points. Um, overall, how do you think your rookie season of no prep Kings went? When I hear the name 20 or the number 23, to me, it's like you could have done better. And, um, as long as, <laughs> and this is so cheesy, but if you're not first for last and, um, you know, coming from the Coughlin family, we have very high standards, or at least mm -hmm. that's how I've always been. We have, we have high standards. We need to perform to the best that we possibly can. And, you know, all of my siblings or cousins or uncles and whatnot, they're all very, very talented race car drivers. And I'm like, man, I got some really big shoes to fill. Um, just looking at my dad and being like, holy smokes, I, I might never drive like him just because he's so talented. And, you know, he tries to explain to me his thought process and the staging lanes. And I'm just looking at him like, you're absolutely nuts. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do that in four seconds, but alrighty. And um, just... That, but that's my goal, though. I, I want to be like them. And, and knowing that that was my rookie year is the first time I had ever driven a car like that, ever driven a door car in general. I came from a dragster, which is nothing like that at all. And, and just being like, OK, you know what? I'm going to take those as a win, just seeing like the positives of season six. You know, we went some rounds. We won a race. And I think we did really well for being called up into the Invitational at the end of June. And I'm, I'm really, really proud of that. And But mm -hmm. that's just kind of the baseline for going into season seven. I want to surpass that immensely going into season seven and, and just saying like, all righty, here's what we were able to do our rookie year. How can we double that in season seven and i know we're capable of it and i know that i'm capable of it i, I at least i have the mindset to do it just because i am my father's daughter and i, I want to be just as good as him one day but yeah i i have high hopes for us you know we were able to kind of bring the car up to me like we kind of were working in a pyramid situation as to like all right i'm this comfortable will bring the car to me and that's how we were able to learn and I, I think that was like probably the best way of doing it, you know, and I, I'm really thankful that we did it that way. It's not just throwing me in and just saying, all right, good luck, figure it out. Right. But, yeah. Because <laughs> I had been like, oh, my gosh. But, <laughs> you know, I, th I think we handled it right. But we also didn't show our hands. So, you know, we, we, we have a very fast race car. And not everybody knows that. And not everybody has seen that just yet. And. You know, some of that is for a reason, and I had to become more comfortable just so we can handle the race car just with the utmost experience because that's what it deserves. It's a beautiful car, and the last thing I want to do is hurt it. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. when we were in Maple Grove, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I did it. I remember getting out of the car and hugging that fender, just being like, I'm so sorry. And <laughs> just, you know, kind of seeing what we all went through to make it happen for the next round. It's just it's amazing. But oh that's something i want to avoid in season seven you know it happens every now and then all the good drivers tell you it's a win not an if but mm -hmm. um i think a lot of people are going to be surprised with season seven i think we showed you just a little bit in season six but get ready for what we have to show nice. you seven. let's let's talk a little bit more about um what you had said basically from what i from what i saw it was you kind of built up and got more comfortable as the season went on um, and you got more competitive as the season went on. At what point do you feel like you had you guys as a crew, um, your dad, everybody involved got a good handle on not only no prep and door cars, but the competition and no prep Kings. Like what, at what point in the season did you feel like, Hey, I think we have a really good idea of what we have to do to be competitive at the, at the top. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm trying to think back to the very specific moment, but I just remember sitting in the car and making a lap. The first time was in Virginia, second race of the season. I was still in the feature class and I'm running. I want to say it was Tim Brown, but I'm not entirely sure. 
and I'm just sitting in the driver's seat and we're letting go. And, and he just happens to be out front. He won that race. It was first round. And I'm sitting in the car, like going like this, like scooting my chair, like, let's go faster. Let's go faster. And um, I think it was that point in time that we're like, all righty, let's take this to the next level. And it would happen every couple of races where, you know, in New England, where we got pulled up to the Invitational, we won first and second round. And then we had a race Damon in the third round and we just barely lost. And I'm like, you know what? It can't be too mad about that. He's on fire this year and he's yeah. doing well. And the fact that I'm able to keep up with him to a degree, my mm -hmm. very first race can't be, can't be too mad about that, but right. just seeing the way that like, just feeling the car and knowing how fast you're going and, and we're able to discuss like, Oh wow, this lap was that much faster than the previous one. Or here's what this one mm -hmm. looks like compared to this one. It's, it's amazing to see the changes that they make and just the progress of the car. But there were multiple times where I'm sitting in the, in the seat and I never imagined I would feel this way, but trying to sit in the seat and to scoot this car forward to go faster. And every time I would <laughs> like that, I'm just like, all righty, let, let's go faster. Cause I really want to beat this person that we drew next round. I don't want to lose to them. And you know, majority right. of the time we did beat them. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you brought up uh, going to the third round. Well, you did that actually four times this past season of your, mm -hmm. of your 10 races invitation. You went to the third round four times um, and that's where it stopped. So do you, what do you chalk that up to, do you think? I mean, we know a lot of things go into winning. Um, luck is one of the things mm -hmm. who you're matched up with in that third in that third round. Um, and you brought it up, which I didn't know, is that you guys were kind of on a, not necessarily, like a kind of a scaled down version of like, you're trying to get comfortable. You don't want to maybe push it as hard as you possibly can. Um, what do you what do you chalk up to, to um, not advancing to the, to the final four um, in, in four of those races? You know, the, the joke we all kind of make is um, <laughs> I like to lose the round before the split. And um, in my bracket <laughs> racing career, my super comp career, it was always that way. Um, <laughs> that's that's what I tell myself to make me feel better. But, um, you know, when we're racing against these guys and they're all super fast, I mean, it I mean, everybody just has to be in their A game. You got to you got to leave first and you got to cross first and it's tough. Everybody's fast. Everybody was there to win it. And I was competing against a really, really tough field. So I, I understood that coming into it. And, you know, it was frustrating to know that we lost third round every single time that we <laughs> made it to that point. But yeah. the fact that we went to that yeah. many third rounds for my rookie year is just yep. impressive, in my opinion. Like, I'm super proud of that. And I'm super proud of my guys for that because we're all new to this shindig. You know, none of us have ever mm -hmm. done this before. We're all just kind of winging it. I know I'm winging it. Um, so I, I, I can't be too mad about that. And they, they gave me such an awesome race car that it really just was up to me to learn how to drive it. Like, how do mm -hmm. I drive this race car to you know, maximize the amount of ET and to make sure we cross first. And there were times where my driving was the reason that we lost. Like I could have driven it better. Like it, it was a fast car, but that person just happened to be a little bit faster and I could have left first and I could have drove it a little bit better. I mean, Mike did a, such an amazing job of giving me a badass race car alongside of Justin and Johnny. Just, I, I couldn't have asked for anything better. And it really taught me a lot to, to learn how to drive that car to to really get the most out of your ET. And one of the things that always stuck with me was my dad called it the, the shoestring method. And I don't want to go too far into it because I don't want to give away all my secrets. But just hearing him explain this, this method of driving that he implemented in his pro mod racing, and he just stands there and he makes it sound like the simplest thing in the world. And I'm looking at him like, there's, I don't know how to do that. Like I can picture it in my head, no problem. And like, I could see myself doing it. But when you're in the moment, you're like, oh shoot, I need to do this instead of just reacting. And you know, that that's really what it takes to make or break that win light. I mean, you just, you need to be good up front and cross first. And everybody was so good at, on the tree at the end of the year, just, yeah. you know, Robin Roberts and I had that thing about guessing and, 
you know, the, the couple times that I, or the one definite time that I did guess on him and didn't turn the wind light on for himself. It, it was a, it was a time in uh, steel Alabama. I believe it was, I, I couldn't believe I did that. And it was a, a discussion Axman and I had prior to that first round. And I'm, I'm talking to the camera guys being like, Oh my gosh, I just talked up that entire deal. I, I, I can't just be all talk and no bite. I really need to follow through on this first round <laughs> win, especially since it's me and Robin Roberts. We've lined up multiple times. And right now I think we're four and two, and we really need to close that gap. I really want to be him this year, but oh my gosh, just knowing knowing that all of that kind of took place in season six, it just really motivates us to be that much better in season seven and, and knowing those little details going into testing and knowing what I need to work on um, for season seven, whether it's reaction time, whether it's reacting in the moment and just making sure that I'm in those positions to learn to react to that is is key. And I think we can accomplish that in testing going into season seven, which hopefully we'll do this week. Nice. Well, Paige, you definitely had a great rookie season. Um, <laughs> I can confirm that towards the end of the season, you were beating picked um, when it comes to all the betting on the line, you were getting picked more oftentimes than not. So that was Oh, people were, so people, were uh, <laughs> people noticed how fast your car was going. So, oh my gosh, it was, uh, it was good. Um, let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about the team side of things. So, this was your first season of No Prep Kings, and also the first season of teams in No Prep Kings. Um, you were picked up by Daddy Dave um, after you started in the futures. Picked up by Daddy Dave a little while later, um, and you remained on this team the whole season. Um, what was your experience on Daddy Dave's team and and working as a team in drag racing? <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, the fact that Daddy Dave pulled me up to the invitational, I was kind of like starstruck just a smidge because it's Daddy Dave. But I'm thinking, like, I remember getting the text from Sam just being like, hey, we want to bring you up to the invitational. And I'm, I'm in my pajamas. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm dancing in my pit at New England. And I'm like, I probably look like a crazy person. And I'm just celebrating. And everybody's like, oh, my gosh. And But knowing that he had picked me and just knowing who he was, I was like, oh, my, oh my gosh. And then I remember they sent Kayla over to ask me to grudge race. And I had to, <laughs> the production team, who were amazing, I had to be like, we're going to have to do that one more time because I kind of <laughs> forgot what I was saying because I couldn't believe the fact that Kayla Morton was asking me to grudge race. And uh, <laughs> it was just such a surreal moment. And, you know, it was, it was a really great experience racing with those guys. And, you know, the team aspects slightly changed throughout that part of the season. And I just, it, you know what, it taught me a lot it taught me a lot and, and daddy Dave specifically taught me a lot. And, you know, he, he gave me some crap for, for sucking in the invitational, but doing well in the big tire class. And, and, you know, at the beginning that really bothered me, I said, no, I'm better than that. Like I am, I'm Troy senior's daughter. I, I'm a better driver than that. I know what I'm doing. Like, I mean, this is my first year and all, but I have a better sense than that. And, yada 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 but you know what it pushed me to do even better and better and better every single race and every time i would get out of that car if i lost a round whether it be first round the invitational or if i happened to lose in the race your way in i'd be like oh my gosh he's, he's gonna drop me he's gonna drop me i was freaking <laughs> out but in the end he pushed me to work that much harder he wa i wanted to be that much better for him just to say daddy dave I just wanted to show you that I could do this. And I am I am an essential part of this team. I want to earn that spot. You know, you asked me to be here. I want to prove my worth. And I I believe that we did that, you know, especially at the last race. And me and Clay Cole were the, the last one standing for Team Daddy Dave. And we really tried to win it for the team. But, you know, it was tough. And just what an experience that was. And racing with all those guys and, you know, even going into season seven, I know there's no teams, but I still look at guys like Clay Cole and Kyle Canyon and Daddy Dave and all those guys. Is, they're still my teammates. And, you know, I mean, we might not be teammates, teammates, but I still like come to them for that. And I'm comfortable around them for that. And 
and knowing that I'm able to go up to them and talk to them and kind of go over my runs and be like, oh, like, here's who I drew. Like, what do you think? And the stuff that we went through as being a team, you know, I feel like I could still go up and talk to them. And, you know, if Dally, Dave and I draw each other again in season seven, I'm I'm not going to let him have it this time. I know that I'm definitely going to turn on a win light against him, even though I love him to death, but it's going to happen. And, um, gosh, it just, it, I couldn't have picked a better team to be a part of. I know that we came in second, I believe. Um, we didn't win it, but I think we worked really well together and it was such an amazing experience. I wouldn't have traded it for the world, even though I wasn't on the winning team, I didn't care. Just the fact that I was called up to be on that team and to work with those drivers. I mean, I watched them on TV growing up. Just the fact that I was able to race with them is just insane. And right. got to know these people on such a more personal level was just so cool. That's awesome. Um, going into that, so, so there were some trades going on during the last few races of the season. Did you did you ever cross your mind that you it was possible that you could get traded? Um, and then when you didn't get traded and you guys went into the last race, how much did you feel? I mean, it's your rookie season. You're doing really, really well at this point. Did you feel a lot of added pressure? Because that, because your team had a legitimate chance at first place going into Texas. That's a, yeah. Honestly, watching those trades go down and, and um, when I didn't perform, I didn't think I would necessarily get traded. I just thought I would get dropped. But, um, I remember, I think it was Alabama, just going into that and seeing the trade between Kayla and Clay and just yeah. kind of watching that go down and, and all the other stuff <laughs> that went with it, you know, was comical. But um, just, I'm, you know, I'm glad that Daddy Dave had enough faith in me to say like, no, I want to keep her on my team. And, um, you know, other people might believe it's for other reasons, but I believe that it was because he had some faith in me to get it done. And, um, yeah. and that's what matters to me. And I'll, it, it doesn't matter what else other people think, but um, seeing that, that one specific trade go down, I was just kind of like, man, I think everybody's underestimating Clay Cole here. You know, he's got a fast yeah. race, car, knows how to drive. It. He kind of showed it to everybody that race. Um, he did really, really well. And we're all kind of, <laughs> because we knew it because we're friends with clay cole i mean we were yeah. in the together and we've been through every race together he's our buddy we talk to him like multiple times a week and um just just knowing that i was just willing to trade him or at least that's how it was to me i don't know the full story I wasn't a part of that conversation but um mm -hmm. Just seeing that whole trade go down, I was like, well, in my opinion, I'm glad to be on the same team as Clay Cole because <laughs> I know what he's capable of. I think he's yeah. got a badass race car. I'm not complaining here. Like, I know Kayla and she's got talent, but look at Clay Cole. And um, mm -hmm. he's funny, so I'm always going to hype him up. But um, just, I think we really showed him off that race and he did more than I did. I think I lost second round against Damon again, which needs to stop. But, um, <laughs> I, I think he's really proved himself. I know he finished 10th or whatever, but he, he really, really did prove himself. And I think he kind of showed everybody like, wow, I, you underestimated me. Here's, here's a result of that. And it benefited us. And I know that in Dallas, I think him and I both went into third round. And I think he went on to fourth round. Uh, he probably won one more round after I did. But um, we really, really tried to carry it for Team Daddy Dave that race. I remember us being like, we would dance and we'd celebrate <laughs> every single round because we're like, I can't believe we're in this position. You know, neither one of yeah. us thought we would ever be on the invitational class or in the invitational class this whole year. And so the fact that we were both on it and then we both got on the same team, we're like, oh my, oh my gosh, none of us ever thought this was going to happen, but it's so cool. And um, yep. I just, you know, that's, I, I really, I thought the trade was, you know, they under mess on the biggest thing I took from that was the underestimated Clay Cole and they should have oh, yeah. him because he is so badass and he did a really, really nice job and he showed them all. So, I mean, Kai yeah. you missed out on that one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I've given Kai ship already about that. <laughs> so, cause I have all the stats, right. I, I could tell, and I've had, 
around the trades to the last three or four races or whatever, like some of the captains I would talk to about, they'd want stats about, hey, who's doing this? They're looking at trades. They're looking at all kinds of stuff, right? And it was like the, the, the last person I thought would be traded, especially like the second to last race or like whatever it was, was Clay Cole. I was like, I don't, I don't understand this at all. I thought it had to, something else must have had to do with it other than just, hey, I want to try to trade for somebody faster because – the second, like the last four races, it was like Ryan and Clay were like the fastest two. Ryan, Clay, and Nate had like the, they were the fastest three guys out there, like just those three guys. So when he got traded, I was just like, yeah, but um, no, but it was. I had a conversation with Dave about his team and stuff like that, and um, you know, maybe shared some stats about you with during, towards the end of the season there. So I was not surprised surprised that you weren't traded. Um, I think Daddy Dave. I think Daddy Dave overall as a team, he did a really good job as far as the whole team thing goes. Um, he had a good strategy about bringing people down and keeping them and not letting other people get them. And it was, so they was, they was pretty strategic throughout the season. That's why you guys uh, finished second. So it was good to, it was good to see that. Yeah. I really enjoyed how we all worked together and, you know, just made it that much sweeter to show them that how stupid it was of a trade for Clay Cole. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) cause he came to my team and I'm like, this is awesome. But you know, and, and just, knowing that what daddy Dave had taught me that year, even though it took me a year to understand it really, I remember sitting at PRI being like, I get it now, you know, like I, I talked to him a little bit cause we did some autograph sessions at the pro charger booth. And I'm just like, I totally understand now. Like I get it. Like the stuff that you said, it makes sense now. And um, he's looking at me and I'm like, you just, I was so mad. At you. And and you made me just want to work harder. And he's like starting to smile. And I'm like, okay, I understand how this works now. But, you know, if, if the teams ever came up again, like if it were ever in the MPK future again, for whatever reason, like I really hope I would get to work with Daddy Dave again because it was truly just memorable. Like I'll, I'll never forget that ever. Right. Um, and speaking of the teams thing, so we know now this season there are no teams anymore um, as far as points and stuff like that. I know – Obviously, people are friends, and you will share stuff with you know your your real life teams. I guess you could say. Um, are you looking forward to more of an individual, all individual season this season, and you can uh, really shine on your own without having any restrictions to you? Yeah, I mean, you know, going into this kind of different format for us, we're like, okay, it's every man for themselves, and and you know, we got our buddies and whatnot and who we talk to on the regular but for me all I know is the teams like competition wise that that's all we know and um I think we're gonna learn within the first race or so like okay I see where everybody stands and I understand how this works now but um Mm -hmm. I just think it gives us more of an opportunity to really refine what we have going on and just say like alrighty you know we're not only competing for a team we're competing for ourselves, and and we we knew that last year but you know we were rookies last year and now that we're coming into this year and saying like all right there's there's no more team championship on the table it's individual so what can we do to outshine the rest of these guys and what what does it take to meet those goals and um i just i just think we're going to get that much more technical about kind of what goes into those those laps every single one that we make and it i mean even who we race against it's like what what kind of tune-up do we need to bring to the table according to who we pull and um i just think it's gonna make it that much that much more interesting and i'm really really excited because you know i i have a few rivals coming off of season six and just people that i'm like i have to beat these people that like i gotta <laughs> happen at least once at least once i want to beat them And, um, just know, I know that we have the cards, like we, we, we know what it takes to beat these people. We just have to go out there and do it. And that's something my dad always said to me, racing was, you, you know how to go out and and win this deal. You might as well just go and do it. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Okay. And, um, I, that's just kind of the principle that I keep applying to myself is you, you know how to let go of a button, you know how to drive this race car and the, you can only get better at it. And, and I think I really get to focus on that more just for myself going into season seven, instead of having to worry 
about the whole team situation on top of my personal performance. So I don't know. I'm excited to focus on a little bit more of myself this year. Yeah, let's let's keep continue with that theme of the 2024 No Prep King season. Um, now you've had a whole season, most of the season to learn and learn how No Prep Kings goes and the competition, and everything. Um, besides Golden Child getting a facelift, is there any other bigger changes or any changes you're making to your race program in, in general to get ready for this season? Oh, there might be a few. Oh. <laughs> You know, with with my dad being Troy Senior, he always has a few uh, tricks up his sleeve a little bit. But um, you know, we we might have we might have some other stuff going on. Maybe a new car. Maybe a partner, oh. driver. Oh uh, wow! Way too much. But um, <laughs> we have stuff going on. I mean, yes, we're gonna start off with Maple Grove with the car that we have uh, running Pro Charger. That's how it's going to be for sure. But we have it set up to change if need be. Um, we're getting that all set up right now. And we're going to start building another car throughout this season. I'm super nice. excited that we're committed to this deal. We absolutely love the no prep racing. And we want to keep doing it. So we've already decided on what car we're going to build. And uh, we're not quite ready to tell everybody what it is. But I'm so excited about it. <laughs> And, um, you know, it might be in collaboration with another driver. I can't quite say, but I'm, I'm wow. really excited about for the potential seasons to come and, and what the future holds. But my dad definitely has a few tricks up his sleeve. He always has and always will. Nice. nice. That's good. I, that's <laughs> awesome to hear. I can't I can't wait to see what comes of that. Um, so we know the the season's going to be 15 races um, mm -hmm. at least. Um, there's 10 of them taking place in the first 12 weeks, um, which is more than even the second half of last year when they did nine, eight in a row or whatever. Um, so how are you preparing yourself both mentally and physically to race every I'm, weekend? I'm trying to do as much work as possible <laughs> leading up to actually this week, since we're going to be testing this week and just being like, oh my gosh, here we go. Here we go again, like on the road all the time. And we're going to be gone and then we're going to come back and then we're going to be gone again. And then we're going to go back somewhere else and, and just kind of mentally preparing for the amount of workload that I have. Cause I, I run kind of like the backstage operations of my fiance's engine shop. Like he does a lot of the technical work of like building the motors and repairing and whatnot. And every now and then I will help out. I'm definitely not as talented as he is, but I really enjoy learning from him. It's really neat. But you know, I run the, I'm, I, I like to consider myself like a little general manager. I'm like the HR, the PR, the, um, the, the bookkeeper, the, this and the, that, and, you know, I, I have to stay on top of that kind of stuff and, and knowing that I have that to manage and then my, my personal business to manage. And, and then I also have my dog to manage. Um, she's, she's quite high maintenance. The, the team mascot, the golden Frenchie, um, you know, she had surgery, um, not too long ago and she's just she's high maintenance but she's great and the surgery was successful and hopefully she'll be able to come on the road with us this year a little bit towards the end maybe but um she's laying right over here she's just looking at me because she knows i'm talking about her but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um you know we we have a lot going on behind the scenes here and um you know we're not always able to capture that for social media to see but we're we're constantly busy you know and we really need to make sure we stay on top of our stuff going into season seven because we kind of now that we know what the schedule's like, you know, after kind of last year was our first year, we didn't really know going into it. And um, now we were like, OK, we know what to expect. Here's how we can plan to to maximize our time at home versus on the road. So, right. That's what I'm in um, what, a, what about your crew? Any changes to your crew? Any changes to sponsors? any retaining any sponsors new ones we we've been doing a great job of uh keeping the sponsors on board you know they have been so great with us and proline pro charger m, m just like i love working with them riesling and um you know elite has helped us a lot you know with the rig situation just been absolutely wonderful to work with and you know i'm i'm looking forward to working with them this year as well and 
and just working with the other companies like Mango Performance and trying to get this car to look the best that it possibly can. And uh, Mr. Wonderful Motorsports, who's the one painted it. But, um, you know, there there might be a few more that we add on to this year. We're not quite ready to announce those, but um, we're, we're really excited about what the opportunities are in front of us and just hopefully we can make those work out. And um, I think these products that we could be potentially partnering with are awesome. I think people could really, really use these. And I know that we'll use them in the shop every single day when we're working on motors and for airboats or restoration or race cars. I mean, it's an essential part of building these motors. And and um, I'm really, really excited. Hopefully this works out for everybody. And um, I know it, it kind of resonates with the family. I know my brother has some involvement in it, which is fun because it's brother, sister kind of deal. But, um, you know, once once we're able to kind of make those things solidified, then we'll kind of announce that to the public. And, and um, you know, between his racing and my racing, we've partnered with just such amazing people and really, really hope we can continue to present those relationships on social media to our fans and just showing how amazing these businesses are that we work with. That's awesome. That's 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 good news. I'm happy for you. Um, let's talk a little bit about the technical side of things. Um, We've seen some rules, preliminary rules about the combination. So we've seen the F4 136 um, get 50 pounds added. Um, we've seen the screw blower um, move up to 98 overdrive. And now most recently, real recently, um, there has been some rumblings about the 140 Pro Charger getting a 25, 25 pound weight break. Um, I'm not sure how involved you are with all the technical and combinations and stuff like that. But I got to imagine that you guys, you and the crew and your dad are probably um, constantly thinking about what you want to do. I mean, you brought up you might not might not just stick with Pro Charger, depending how it goes. Um, is this like, a, especially with No Prep Kings and how the rules haven't even been released yet, like officially, is this like a, uh, is this something that's always on your on your guys' mind? Because for sure you, your dad, like you guys are the top-notch comp competitors that, um, match the no prep king some of the no prep kings competitors and i know talking with them like a lot of them are going crazy because um they you know they want to have the 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 fastest stuff possible um uh, based on the rules so can you talk about that how that how you guys decide how you guys come up with what you're doing yeah totally um always want to have the the fastest car on the property but um kind of knowing how my dad operates is like, all righty, let's, let's look at the, the rules that we've been given and, and kind of go over them. All right. What, what benefits us the most and, and what power outer should we lean towards? Like, does it make more sense to go this route or this route and, you know, screw blower or turbo or pro charger? I mean, we, we really want to just lay it out and just, all right, pros and cons list really mm -hmm. of like, what do we want to do? You know, my dad was a big turbo guy and uh, he he loved that stuff. And, you know, I always thought of myself running the turbos just like him. And and um, just remember watching him race, race his cars and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, that, that very well could be an avenue or we could go nitrous. You just never know. And I think my, my dad is the one to have all of the options laid on the table. And if there's a race on the schedule and he's like, alrighty, let's roll with this one. You know, we, we think that this is going to be the best possible combination. We want to go that route because we're here to win and we want to be the fastest car on the property. And yeah, we're new to this, but we're not, we're not here to be mediocre. We're here to win. And um, I know that since we've been through our first year, we're here to to compete. You know, I remember my dad saying that, you know, season seven, we're coming and flipping rolling. And he nice. was serious. And you just <laughs> see his face and he's so serious. And I'm like, All right, just on the ground, guys, like, let's, let's rock and roll. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, That's he's awesome. so passionate, which is so exciting. And, you know, I think every avenue, yeah, there there's pros and cons to each. And, you know, you see the what the pro charger stuff is what we're running right now. And, you know, the weight weight added being added here and taken away here. It's kind of like, alrighty, so what what benefits us at this point in time with what we have now? And uh, we just kind of make our decisions from there. But he is also one to not let anybody know what else is going on. Yep. I mean, I think what you know is going on but it's not exactly it so right. um, 
might think we're going to do this, but in reality, we're going to do that. And by the time yep. you figure out what we're actually doing, we're going to change it up. So yeah, I'm that's awesome. To keep that up. Yeah, that's going to be good. Um, Paige, so we don't uh, we don't have an exact date yet of when season six is going to air, but are you nervous and or excited to watch yourself on TV? Oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> it's just it's wild to think that I'm going to be on TV. I mean, I just look at myself as some 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 racer, and um, I grew up watching my dad on TV, my brother, my uncles, my grandpa, and I'm just kind of like. Oh, yeah, whatever. It's TV. It's no big deal. But my mom's like, oh, well, let's have a watch party. And I'm like, a what? Like, we'll have a party and we'll watch the episode where you air. And I'm like, that's probably when I wreck. And I'm like, you sure you want to wear that for a party? <laughs> like, yeah, I got brought up in New England, but, um, you know, where I wreck, that might make some TV coverage right there. And I'm like, that might not make a good, you know, party party topic or whatever but um, <laughs> she's looking at me and I'm like okay we can have a watch party that's fine it's and she's she's so excited the fact that I'm going to be on TV and I think it'll kind of hit me when I'm able to watch the show as being mm -hmm. like you know I I could turn on my TV right now and turn on the NHRA channel and watch you know throughout the years and I get to see my grandpa on there dad uncles my brother I've never seen myself I mean I was in the sportsman ranks and that was never on TV and and knowing that I could flip the channel and when the no prep king series airs I could potentially see myself and that is like one terrifying and two, <laughs> like hard to wrap my mind around just because I'm like I've never seen myself on TV but I'm like I really hope that he don't look weird. Um, <laughs> you just don't know. We're going to find out, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to watch season six from the viewer's perspective. Right. Yep. And see, <laughs> I, I can imagine you guys are curious. You're curious of how they even, um, you know, produced it, how it, how it portrays everything, how it comes out. Um, I'm sure there'll be something like, oh yeah, I remember that. Or that's not how that actually went down. <laughs> or I'm sure it'll be a lot of, a lot of that and that so that's that's cool to see that for the first time makes it fun um <laughs> yes um Paige, what i got one last question before we take some uh from the fans if you want um so i guess it's it's probably safe to say you could race in a lot of different series a lot of different types of race cars if you would if you cho choose to um what is it about no prep kings that made you come back for a second season and go all in like you are i think honestly just the memories that we made i mean you know, I've, I've never done anything like it. And all I've known is quarter mile racing and the occasional eighth mile bracket racing. And um, just seeing how we all work together. I mean, I remember being on the road with my dad and his pro mod team and, and just saying like, oh, we'll just wait a couple of years. This is going to be like the, the dream team 2.0. We're going to come back at some point. And um, I figured I would always drive. And I never knew it would be for this specific series. I just, I never dreamed that I would be able to do something like this, but to know that we were able to do something like this, let alone have such a successful rookie season, I'm just kind of like, oh my gosh, we, we gotta come back and keep doing this. You know, we're on the TV show and just seeing the way my dad's face lights up every single time we go up to make a round and, and being able to talk to him on the radio after every lap and, and really going over the data, going over the videos, going over what it felt like, what it sounded like and, and just talking to him about it because he has so much knowledge and wisdom about driving these kinds of cars and, and yeah. just every single ounce of knowledge from him and trying to apply it to what I'm doing right now is just unbelievable. And what the biggest thing that keeps me going is just being able to do it with my dad. Cause I think that is just such an important and precious little bond that we've had. I've always been my father's daughter, but just knowing that this is something we could do together and he absolutely loves it and just, that we can enjoy this together and really know that we're coming together for season seven to kick some serious ass just makes us that much more motivated to work harder. That's awesome. I'm excited for you guys. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, if you're watching right now, if you have any questions for Paige, put it in the chat box um, and she will answer. I don't Can you see the comments page or no? Well, I don't know if you, are you now? Now I'm seeing them. 
Okay. Um, so if you have a question, oh. put it in there. I do have another question for you, Paige. Um, oh, wow, there's a lot. Okay. I'm sure you had a lot of great moments in your rookie season, a lot of memorable moments. Was there one that really stuck out as the most memorable from this season? Oh, my gosh. Hard to pick one. But um, one that I say will com was comical was um, guessing on Robin in Alabama. And I just remember talking that that first round up so much to the production and just being like, oh, my gosh, I really hope I follow through on that or else it's going to be really embarrassing. <laughs> you know, Robin is is he's consistent. He's he's competitive. He's fast. I mean, he knows what he's doing. It's no joke. And, um, you know. Just knowing that and being like, oh, that's slightly intimidating. But, um, okay, you know how to beat him. You've done it once before. And um, when we did beat him, I was like, holy smokes. We, we, okay, first of all, I, I, you know, I backed my claims up. I beat him. And um, second of all, we kind of made a joke about the guessing from that point forward. And um, bless his heart. But I remember, I actually think this part was in Phoenix. But I... Um, we we he actually beat me it was the round where um in phoenix the tree never dropped in believe it or not third round um mm -hmm. never dropped i let go of the transfer button but i only moved maybe a smidge and he just made a lap but no red light or green light had turned on nothing and um so we just decided in the end just hey let's rerun this deal no big deal so we came up about like half hour 45 minutes later or whatever it was and um he ends up beating me just by maybe a hair or two. I'll give him that. But um, we, we get out of the car and I tell him, hey, man, good job. And I just look at him and I said, you know what? You're tough. You're consistent. And I really want to effing beat you next year. <laughs> like, looking at me and I'm like, yeah, it's a compliment. It's a compliment. But I'm, I'm like, I hope you mean, I hope you took that as a compliment because that's what it was. And um, because. I mean, like, honestly, that's a team to beat. He's consistently fast. He's consistently good up front. And, and that's ultimately yep. what you want to beat. That's what wins a lot of rounds. And that's who I want to beat. So I hope, hopefully, he knows that that was a compliment. That's something to be proud of for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> uh, we got some questions here, Paige. Uh, Lawrence uh, wants to know uh, what is your daily driver? Oh boy. Okay. So I do have my 1992 RS. Uh, she's fixed up, ready to go. Um, I do drive her around. Absolutely love her. Um, not a T-top, but does have working AC. I absolutely love this car. It's in beautiful condition. Nothing crazy fancy, but absolutely wonderful. We take her to car shows and everybody loves it. But um, my daily driver is a 2021 Dodge Durango Hellcat. And um nice partnered with a company called American Muscle Performance in Pompano Beach, Florida, and we were able to kind of soup it up, do a little changes with the pulleys and the spark plugs and, you know, the intake, and it makes about 800 horsepower to the wheel right now, and um, <laughs> you know, not much more till we can beat the soccer mom, so I'm, I'm, that'll be the next age, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Nice. <laughs> uh, Todd has a question, I believe he's trying to ask, um, like, maybe what color is the your car, what color, what, what is it called? What is the paint paint job called? Does it have a certain name? Technically, and there's been some some talk about the color and um, the the legitimate name, but what would, what would the name that we decided on, like the color that was sent to us from the factory that we had specifically was called Luscious Toffee. And I know there might be some other names for the same color, but technically the one that we picked all agreed on was Luscious Toffee. <laughs> nice. It was a whole awesome. controversial deal. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, Richard Rowe. Do you know Richard Rowe? Name sounds familiar. He's uh, Ryan Ryan Martin's uh, media guy. He has a question. He's he's kind of a he wants to know uh, when season six is going to air on Discovery. <laughs> what well, I know is April. So I'm, I'm just guessing it's going to be when we see um, Not entirely sure. I don't want to give out any false information, but I'm just going to continue to check the website every single day since it is the month of April. And because uh, I'm not missing this. And um, that, that's pretty much all I know is 
it's going to air this month, I would assume towards the end, just like when we start racing. That is what I've heard as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question. Um, Nicole says, Paige, do you think you would ever run an NHRA Pro Mod or PDRA Pro Boost? Oh, that's funny, Nicole. <laughs> um, there was some like rumors about the Pro Boost going around, um, not to name any names. But, um, you know, I really, really like what we're doing. I love the no prep stuff. I love the eighth mile stuff. And if we have the opportunity to keep doing that, that's what I want to I want to stick with no prep kings as long as they they want me. And um I'm we're all having such a blast. But you know, if in in the future, if this is no longer an option or we're no longer on the show or whatever, then I might consider other options. But for right now. I am all for Street Outlaws, No Prep Kings. And as long as I'm allowed to race at their events and to be on their TV show and they're welcoming me with open arms, I'm going to be there every single race. So I'm nice. Asking. Hell yeah. Well, Paige, um, first off, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show again. Um, I always have a, bl a blast when you come on. Um, I'm really excited to hear that um, you're ready to kick some ass this year and go, go all in. I'm excited about that. I know. <laughs> The pedigree you come from and i know with your dad being serious about it like it's it's gonna happen so i'm excited to see it um your car looks great third gens are my favorite car ever um so i'm happy that there is a third gen represented again in no prep kings i love the new paint color um so wish you the best of luck i'll be at maple grove and i will come say hi please do um uh, thank you so much i'm glad to be the uh the third gen representative uh the best looking one also and um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be a part of a part of your show. Thank you so much. Have a good night. All righty, you too. Bye bye. Bye.